what we want to look at here is what does sand do to a pump? So these are two identical Pioneer pumps. Customer brought them to me, said, hey, can you make one good one out of these two? So we have the suction cover off, the volute is off. Now we're looking here, we're looking at the impellers. My first instinct was that they're worn out. However, yeah, we can patch them together, but I'm not sure that it's worth it. And we'll show you a few reasons why. So the first thing, sand is very abrasive. Manure is going in the center of the pump and it's coming out the outside. So it's going in at, let's just say, 10 PSI. It's coming out here on the outlet, outlet, let's say you're at 180 PSI. So that's 170 PSI that's trying to go down, trying to get through. If you see on the nose of both impellers, this isn't the first time these pumps have been taken apart. Someone added a stainless wear ring on this one and they added a steel wear ring on this one. This stainless is something somebody made because under the stainless there's a steel one under that and the stainless one's welded on. So if you have a pump that's, war I'm gonna say a worn out pump, one of the things you do is make a wear ring that an oversized wear ring, stick it on the nose of your impeller and weld it fast. I've done that myself on, on my own pumps already. Right here, the spot that's worn, that comes from the sand. So they were pumping sand through it. And actually we'll show you this impeller has sand on the back side of the veins. Like right inside here, there's sand packed in there. There's also, I've never seen this before, but there's a notch worn in the impeller. It obviously comes from sand. Another thing, the back on the back side of the impeller, right here where I'm sticking my fingers in, that should be a 30 thousandth, so half of a 16th. And I can get my fingers in here. So that gap is way too big. So the reason that it's supposed to be tight is so that you aren't getting debris, whether it's sand or solids, down into your mechanical seal. They actually have little veins on the back of the impeller to sling everything out. So when that gap opens up, now those veins aren't slinging anymore. The sand's getting in there and it's just wearing everything out. On this pump, somebody worked on it. They put a piece of quarter inch metal on the back plate to tighten up this gap. That is something that they simply drilled and tapped, they used countersink bolts and went through with their bolts and bolted this plate in. That is a way to extend the life of your pump. What it allows you to do is it allows you to move the impeller towards the suction cover. You tighten up your gap back here. You tighten up the gap on this side because you got all this manure that's trying to get through. So when this gap and here on this side as well is supposed to be a tight tolerance, roughly a 30 thousandths or less depending upon your pump. And that is basically, it's a seal so that your high pressure doesn't come to your suction. I had a pump, the first engine driven pump. It was a Pioneer, the same size as this. One day the guy pumping says, hey, we got a manure leak. Your pump's leaking at the inlet. The reason the pump was leaking at the inlet was because he was doing sand laden manure and it just wore clear out through my suction cover. Like where the, the flange bolts on, the, the metal was all gone. And that was because the sand when it starts getting down over, getting through here, the wear really accelerates. The sand is rotating with the impeller, so it's just sanding away on your suction cover. That is why if you're pumping sand, you need a white iron pump. These are not white iron pumps, and they were using them for sand. So now we'll show you what the volute and suction cover look like. So here we have the volute, and if you'll notice, the inside here is all chewed up. That simply comes from the sand. I don't understand the physics of it, how it works exactly, but you'll get these gouges. It, it seems like whenever there's a place where the sand, it's not smooth, there's a disruption. Like you can't see it, but down in here where the drain hole is, that hole is worn out the side. The, the sand just, just chews away at the metal. So they technically, you could go in here with a welder, weld this up on the other volute. That one, there is some weld. But the problem is it's a cast iron and welding doesn't work so well. Your weld will probably hold, but it might not. It's best to have the correct pump so that you don't need to be welding in your volute. A white iron pump, in my farmer mind, they add chrome to the casting. So the, the idea is to make the metal harder than the sand. So what that does is that way when the sand comes through and tries to eat on it, the sand breaks down rather than the metal breaking down. So it's simply to try and get harder than the metal the manufacturers complain because it takes diamond tip tooling, so it's really hard to drill. 
really hard to tap. That's why they do not have drilled and tapped holes like this. They use a T-slot, and it's because it's, and T-slots are difficult to cast, but that's easier than drilling and tapping. So if you see a casting that has slots like this suction cover, that is because this is easier to make than something that's drilled and tapped. So here's the inside of the suction cover. This wear ring is gone long ago. So right now we're an eight inch ID on the suction cover. The nose of this impeller is about six and a quarter, seven and a quarter. We have an eight inch here on the inside of the suction cover is at eight inch. The nose of the impeller with their wear ring that they made is around seven and a quarter. So there's a three quarter inch, so that's a three eighth the whole way around. That, so this, the original wear ring that would have been inside here is long gone. You can see the groove, there's a groove worn here. And on my pump that I had, my first pump that we wore out through on this whole end, and basically what it did, is as your sand comes in here, the impeller's spinning. So the sand is spinning as well. And it just grinds away on this. It does not wear, the nose of the impeller will not wear as fast as the suction cover does. And that is because the sand is spinning with the impeller. But it'll just eat away at this. And once it starts, it goes quick. So if you pull your pump apart and you can stick your finger, or if you look in the back and you can stick your finger in like this, you have a problem. Do something about it, don't wait. Uh, the longer you wait, the worse it's going to get. You lose a lot of pump efficiency because you're just circulating in there and you're not going out the drag line, out the hose. So for this particular, these two pumps, they are worn, the impellers are worn that hard that I don't have any good way of getting them off because I'm bending them up just trying to get them off. And this farmer also does have sand. If he were doing, say, hog manure and he were doing just a million gallons a year, you could patch one of these pumps together and he could get five, six years out of it. However, doing a couple million gallons of dairy manure with some sand along, you can take, if you were to have one of these pumps as a brand new pump, if you would pump, I'm gonna say, a million gallons of sand laden manure through, it would look like one of these. Sand is very abrasive and it will chew through this casting very quickly. Some guys say they'll just buy a regular pump. A regular pump is half the, pre when I say regular, a non-hard, a non-white iron is about half the price of a white iron pump. They say, well, just, we can buy two new ones like this for the price of one white iron. The problem is the sand, if you're pumping any amount of sand, it just chews them up. Within a couple million gallons, you're gonna have a worn out pump. If you're pumping sand, buy a white iron pump. It's going to be cost you less in the long run. Your cost per gallon pump will be a lot less. The most important thing with whether it's a white iron or a conventional is check your distance here at the back end. When this starts wearing, that you're getting a bigger gap, change your wear rings. And don't pump sand with a non-white iron pump. If you want to, great. We're happy to help you out with new pumps, uh, but it does wear them out very quickly. Who are the major pump manufacturers in the manure pumping world? Five years ago, there was two major players. It was Pioneer and Cornell Pump. However, since COVID, Pioneer has decided to pull out of the manure pump market. They sent a letter out to all their dealers saying that effective on this date, they are no longer selling pumps. And 90 days from that, from that point, they will end all parts. So if you need an orphaned Pioneer pump, I have one for you. I don't feel right selling it to anyone because parts aren't really available. So I'll just run it myself to wear it out. Cornell is the only major player in the manure pump market anymore. There are a few others. The Dota pumps, they make a good PTO pump. And then there's also Smart Turner out of Canada. However, I have not used any of them. I know some people that have, and they were disappointed with the performance. If you're interested in a Cornell pump, give me a call at 610-468-9666.